now to Stuart Patrick, who's the Chief Executive Director of the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, and I, I, I'm guessing a, a rather disappointed man. I would say so, yes, but disappointed on behalf of so many members who will feel that they are, once again, like light bulbs being switched on and off. Um, and in Glasgow City uh, alone, about 80,000 jobs that will now go back into uh, suspension, uh, hopefully under the job retention scheme, but I wonder how many of them will uh, emerge from that uh, in due course. Well, now I want to pick up on that because many companies were just struggling, got to this point, thought maybe there was light at the end of the tunnel. What does this mean to them? Well, I should think that uh, for them it's for, for many of them, particularly those in retail and hospitality and other consumer facing businesses, this is a pretty desperate situation because Christmas is the period when you build up your reserves for the earlier part of the year when times are a bit tougher. Uh, and obviously many businesses will have bought up Christmas stock ready for Christmas season. So there'll be real concern that even though the government has said, well, we're going to do this for three weeks and it'll be finished by the 11th, um, it doesn't allow an awful lot of time to get a Christmas season. And even then we wonder how likely it is that we will actually come out of that, uh, these levels uh, at, uh, on the 11th of December. I mean, I think it's something like 30,000 jobs in Glasgow alone rely on retail, the nighttime economy. How many of those are, are in serious trouble now with this? Well, I'd say um, 30,000, that's just the city centre of Glasgow. If you're uh, looking across the wider city, then it gets uh, multiples of that. So um, I would say one of the best reports I've seen so far that actually rings true uh, on the financial circumstances was the City UK's report in the summer on recapitalisation of small businesses. That's exactly what I'm hearing from uh, many of our members, that they are building up unsustainable loans. I think uh, the, the figures that the City UK were putting out were something like 780,000 SMEs across the UK had built up towards £35 billion worth of unsustainable lending. That's exactly uh, what we're seeing. I was talking to one small business owner yesterday who's saying, well, I might be able to apply for a £1,500 grant, but my rent, my monthly rent is £7,000. Well, where am I getting the, the balance of that? Um, and my business was once a strong business and is now a very weak business. I don't have the cash to sustain this for very much longer. I fear that's going to be replicated uh, across a whole series of businesses but in the this, consumer economy. Yes, economy. Stuart, this roller coaster we're all on, and let's face it, this yesterday there was the euphoria. Here we had a second vaccine. There seemed to be light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps there really is. But if Christmas, and God willing it's not, but if Christmas is effectively a write-off for businesses, can they sustain until the spring, which seems to be the moment that light at the end of the tunnel becomes light? Well, if I have to say that for a lot of businesses, the answer is going to be no, uh, but particularly because January, February tend to be the worst months of the year. Uh, and I suspect a lot of their Christmas stock will have to be sold at discounts on a much more higher percentage than previously would have been the case in the uh, past year. So, yeah, I'm afraid I'm, I'm quite pessimistic about the ability, particularly of smaller companies, to be able to sustain themselves through to the, to the end of the spring. That's a big ask. Who would be First Minister, though? I mean, these decisions change lives, uh, and yet they have to be made. I fully understand that. I think, actually, there's a lot of disillusionment, though, in the business community, partially because there, there, there was a feeling of a deal that we would invest in... Uh, PPE and safety equipment, follow the tests and protect guidelines, provide the data, and there would be in return from government an effective test and protect system. That hasn't worked. And perhaps the one piece of uh, information coming out today that I thought, well, at least perhaps there is hope, is that the Scottish government is saying that they are now minded to look at mass testing uh, and that they are beginning to prepare for mass testing because that's the only route out of this that we can see, even with a vaccine coming. And if we're very optimistic this spring, perhaps the summer, even later, perhaps, depending on how the logistics work. So in the, in the interim, we absolutely need mass testing to be able to help to reduce the, the positive cases uh, and not have to rely on lockdowns constantly being implemented mm. throughout the winter. Stuart, it's good to talk to you. I wish we were talking about something else, but there we are. Stuart Patrick, thank you very much. Thank you very much.